Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Cryptids and Monsters video. Alright, let's go ahead and let's talk about another entry here. This one based on one of your newer suggestions. And then I'm going to give this series a rest for just a little bit. I think this will be my 10th video now for this last round. And then I'll focus on some other stuff too. Be on the lookout for the Mysteries and Disappearances videos next. And then every now and then I'll throw in a Cryptid of the Week too for your viewing pleasure. This one has to do with an interesting encrypted in the sense that it's something that is yet again involving a book or was described in a book called the book of imaginary beings I just talked about the book during my last cryptid video so it's interesting to come across yet another one featured within it and this is a cryptid that purportedly comes from the lost city of Atlantis so what an interesting link there too and then also I picked this because when you look at it and you're looking at it now it definitely looks like something that, as weird as it sounds, it could exist in this world. Almost in a sense like when you look at the Lord of the Rings movies and you see those 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 great looking monsters within them. I mean, they look almost like a fantasy world, but at the same time, it doesn't shake your head and disbelief to realize that they're right there alongside humans. Like in this case, the orcs, the trolls, and the ants, and some of the other ones. So, I thought this would be a great creature to talk about. It's called the Periton. So let's go ahead and let's talk about all the interesting information associated with this unique creature. So what is this Periton? Well yet again it's another mishmash of two creatures in one. How they came about being into one who knows but essentially you would just take your average looking deer or in some cases called a stag and then combine it with some birds very large birds in this case and there you have it you have the periton essentially as this cryptid in some iterations regarding its appearance the this periton is a full complete deer with just large wings associated with it so in other words his body is basically the same as a deer or a stag it has the regular head neck four legs everything and even in some cases antlers too and then of course those very very large wings in other iterations though it looks almost like a deer slash stag if but for the fact its back legs are more than the lines of those of a bird like it has those big claws like you would see let's say on a gigantic eagle that kind of stuff and that way it can use these claws to grab prey as it comes down straight from the sky so those are some of the other ways that this periton is described and of course it still has those very large wings under that interpretation too um, other things that stand out with regards to the periton is the fact that it, see, it has like these weird colors the way it's been depicted throughout multiple parts of history like in some cases it's just your average looking deer color like in this case light brown dark brown whatever is the case but in other particular uh, uh, versions of it it has like this weird bluish tint to it almost a green tint also as well maybe even a grayish tint also as another version it just seems like it's just a whole gamut of color when it comes to it. Now as far as where it's from, again that's what makes it so interesting. It seems to be from the long lost city of Atlantis, that legendary city that supposedly was destroyed by an earthquake, volcano, whatever is the case, and then just basically sank into the sea. So if we're talking about that, we're talking about a creature that would have been around for a long long time because um, during those days at the presumed let's say existence of Atlantis then it would have been something centuries centuries back so that thing whatever it was when it was existing with those uh, people there in Atlantis then that gives you an idea of its time period so much so in fact that it was even chronicled as being a creature that could be used to help destroy or bring about the downfall of Rome so yet again another Another link into its 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 past history, like how long it stretches back to it. Even so much so when it was prophesied to bring down the uh, the downfall of Rome, that, then that means that it was even further back in terms of a number of years or centuries that it was around before that. Um, it doesn't really have anything as far as any bad things associated with it. It doesn't like let's say attack people. It doesn't uh, kill people. But there is one interesting thing that stands out. This thing, the way it lives 
lives, uh, it apparently casts a shadow of a man. As crazy as it sounds, if you were to see this Perryton and let's say the sun were hitting it, and then you would see its shadow on the ground from the sun, then the shadow, instead of looking, let's say, like a mixture of, in this case, of a stag with wings, instead you would see an upright human. You would see the shadow of an upright man just basically standing in that very spot. And this is supposed to be something that lasts throughout its entire lifetime, but if it kills a person, I don't know necessarily if it does it, let's say, on its own, if it's hunting or if it's used as some kind of weapon, like, because uh, when I was reading about this Periton, I could just totally imagine, um, like, I remembered some of the comics of Wonder Woman, how she would ride around in a giant horse on wings. It made me wonder if this was the case, something similar to it, where they could use it as, uh, somebody could use it, let's say, as a weapon to, to ride around and then use it as another weapon weapon to attack. Either way though, once a Perryton actually kills a man, or maybe even used to kill a man, then that's when it starts to cast its own shadow. So it truly then looks like the shadow of a deer slash stag with some large wings on it. Don't know exactly why it seems to have that notion. There is though more of a spiritual link because apparently the idea is these Perrytons used to be something along the lines of a former human. Somebody that was just living somewhere in this world and then they ended up dying. But the way they ended up dying, like their soul eventually lived on trapped, I guess, within this earth, and then it get, got somehow linked to a Perrington being born. And it's it's the closest link, apparently, to this notion of this of this thing casting the shadow of man. That's all it is. It's essentially, in this case, a man, or soul of a man, or a person that was dead and then trapped within the body of a Perrington, just happened to be uh, linked to it after the person died, and then this Perrington was born. So that's at least another interesting link to it, too. But that's it. That's pretty much all the information associated with this legendary cryptor, this Parrington. No known indication of it being somewhere out there in this world recently in terms of encounters, locations. I couldn't even find something like where it would be linked, like New Zealand, the Philippines, Thailand, other stuff, places that are usually ripe for cryptids, nothing indicating that these things currently have a home, other than the fact that they used to have Atlantis as their home, and then they ha somehow, whenever this thing was, that location was destroyed, they just simply flew off. So whether they flew off to another permanent world or another dimension, whatever is the case, these things are somewhere out there but haven't been seen since then. But again, that's it. That's pretty much all the information associated with this very unique creature. One last thing, too, they have made presences within various forms of entertainment out there. Like, for example, they've been in several books. There was a book that was um, associated called the... Uh, the Cinnabar box, if I'm not mistaken, which is more like almost like a fantasy novel, and then it, they played like a minor villain within it too. There was another book called Hollow Earth uh, that was also associated with the Parenting. It's even been included in some games. Uh, Dungeons and Dragons is probably the most well-known game that it's linked to. In this case, though, it does have the back legs of a bird rather than, let's say, the average deer or stag. And then another one is a PlayStation 2 game called Sugan atonement. So that goes to show that these things, even though they live in a world of, uh, they haven't been seen in a long time and they live in a world of fantasy, they still make a presence within modern popular culture. But again, that's it. That's all the information. If anyone has anything else I might have missed, anything else that stands out with some good info, please post those comments below. They'd be really, really good to hear. So, Alright everybody, thanks again as always. Take care.